want to start out and share six important um, ways that online learning is different than face-to-face -face learning and how we can use good communication strategies to help our students move in the right direction. So the first thing that I want to share about communication, and this kind of goes with what I've already said a little bit before, is that our students are concerned. They're concerned about, is their technology going to work? Is the learning going to be as meaningful? Are they going to master the student learning outcomes? Are they going to continue to have feel like they have a community and connection? And so they're looking to us to say, how do we react to this situation? So the very first thing that I would encourage you to do is to connect with your students as soon as possible. My university canceled classes for several days to give faculty an opportunity to adjust their curriculum to these online tools. And during those few days, our students were concerned. So just reaching out, and I shared at the bottom of the screen, so you can certainly pause this at another time and, and use any of those words that you like. But um, you know, sending a message out to your students and saying, it's going to be OK. We're in this together. I've got your back. You're going to learn. I'm going to be the one to help you learn. I'm going to make exceptions where necessary that we are in this together. One thing that I would suggest is that you use your learning management system to send out messages to your students. And that is for several ways. Email is fantastic. And we know that in most of our learning management systems, you can very easily send out an email to the entire class or groups. But here's the reason I suggest doing it on your LMS. First of all, when you send out a message, it can be pushed to every student's um, inbox and we know that students are used to push notifications content coming to them but it stays in the course so students are able to go back and refer to the information many times in a face-to-face -face class I get to stand up and remind them of all of these important things several times every week they may only get one major message from me but every time they log into their learning management system that message pops up Another thing is um, it preserves educational records of connection and communication. So I have a record of all the times that I connected with the students, all the messages that I post, all of the assignments, all of the lectures. So if I use my learning management system as that communication mechanism, I have a record of everything that I've done, an educational record of how I've assisted the students in meeting the learning outcomes for the course. The second thing that I want to mention about communication is that in an online course, it has to be frequent and robust. Students need to be able to see that we are there with them. So things like posting announcements and sending emails and calling students that aren't logging into their LMS or completing their work. I know just today I went through every single one of my students and every single one of my class and it's great because the LMS will tell me when they got into the course, what they did, how long they stayed. And it takes a minute to send them a quick email and say, hey, I see you only watched half the video today. Is everything okay? You having technology problems? What can I do to um, assist you in this learning? But students need to see our presence. And I always use this rule of five. I try and reach out to my students at least five times during the course of the week. Now, the truth is, I'm really teaching flipped classes and not completely online. And in a minute, we'll talk about synchronous and asynchronous. But because my students expected to be in class during certain hours, I'm using those for live sessions with my students. Now, I'm recording those sessions because I realize students might have technology problems. So students that can't join us live, even though that's the expectation and the hope, they can go back and watch those. But I try and make sure I have five points of contact every week with my students. So maybe we have two synchronous sessions, maybe I send them an announcement on Sunday, and I make it very clear when I'm gonna send the announcement. Um, I probably am doing online office hours, and if nobody comes to see me in my online office hours, as something happens, in my face-to-face -face office hours, if nobody comes to see me, then I use that time to reach out to them and say, hey, how'd the assignment go? Or I saw this fabulous post you, you put on the discussion board. I just really want to give you some individual praise for that great work. So think, did I make five touches with my students this week in my class? The third communication um, 
tip that I want to share is about feedback. In an online course, we don't have the same ability as we do in a face-to-face -face course to give group feedback, to stand up in front of the class and say, all right, here's the papers you just turned in. Here's three really great things in general about the papers and three things that we're going to work on in the second half of the semester. Or here's one concept nobody got on the exam, so I threw those questions out and we're going to talk about those again. We're going to do some additional lecture activities with them. So when you're giving feedback in an online class, it's difficult for students to see tone. So giving robust, full feedback, I usually create a document with several things that, that I know a lot, I'm gonna to want to comment on a lot of students' papers and then I can cut and paste, which makes it quicker. I use a lot of rubrics. Um, one tool that I really like that you can Google is called Rubristar, and it's a free online resource to create rubrics for, in your courses. Um, you can use other people's rubrics. There's thousands and thousands on there, or you can use their templates and create your own. But it's, it makes it very quick to be able to grade and then to be able to spend the time writing robust feedback. One of the things that I like to do is to give general feedback announcements. So if students turn in a paper, I'll record a very quick video with a general feedback for the whole class about that assignment. And then the, in, the students can go into their individual assignments to see feedback. The fourth thing about communication in an online course is how important it is to be clear and direct in your expectations for the week. This is an example of what I put up in one of my courses. So at the beginning of every week, and I like the idea of using modules or weeks. So when they come in, we're starting in week nine. So it says week nine, uh, March 16th through the 20th and they know exactly what it is that they're supposed to be doing that week. And if I can tell them how much time they should expect to spend on each of these, it really helps the students stay focused and manage their time independently. Online learning is difficult because it takes a lot of self-discipline to get all of the assignments and projects done. And it's important to remember, our students, for the most part, didn't sign up for this. They didn't expect to have to be learning in an online environment. So obviously, offering grace instead of justice is probably going to be called for a lot this semester, um, you know, undeserved mercy. But the more direction you can give your students, the better. So for example, I would say the first thing you're going to do this week is watch this three minute and 20 seconds. 29 second module overview. Then you're going to read chapter number two. It's 21 pages long. And I'll show you in a minute how in my course I would actually embed the ebook into it so they could just click on it and automatically be reading the digital um, copy of the book which is a fantastic benefit for those for our students. Then you're going to watch this. Then you're going to submit this. Then you're going to participate in this discussion board. But it's very, very clear what they're going to do. And then I always come back and say, and this week we're focusing on this student learning outcome. This is the important outcome that we're going to be focusing on this week. All right, fifth online office hours. So we set up office hours um, as academics and students come and see us and make appointments. But a lot of times in class, we'll say, hey, so-and-so, you want to stay after for a few minutes so I can catch up with you about something? Or you'll call students out that, that might not be as engaged as you had hoped. Well, online office hours are a great way to do that exact same thing, to call people out and say, hey, XYZ, would you please plan, plan on stopping into my online office hours? I want to talk about the, the fabulous job you did on your paper or what have you. There's lots of ways to do online office hours. The tool that I really love is Zoom. Skype is a good one. Your university may have a, a variety of different tools, like you may have um, something within your LMS that you can do it, or you might really like Google Hangouts. So whatever tool, GoToMeeting or WebEx, there's lots of tools. The reason I like Zoom is it's free. Now, my university has the paid account, so we've got a lot of these really extra great benefits that come with it. But Zoom is so easy to use. That's actually a picture of me this week in my Zoom office hours. I minimize the screen. It's in the quarter and I work away. And, you know, during my online office hours, if nobody comes to see me, I'm reaching out to students. I'm taking that opportunity to build one of those five um, connections. So I really encourage you to use your online office hours and encourage students to come and see you. And then finally, the last communication strategy I would give you is to really prioritize what students need to know. We 
are, are offering ourselves some grace and some kindness and saying there is no time to create a high quality online class in a weekend. But what I can do is ensure that whatever the gold nuggets are in this week or in this class, that every student walks away with those. So whether I'm going to do synchronous or asynchronous lectures, whatever activities I'm going to choose, I'm gonna focus on what the most important um, concepts are what the students really need to complete, master, or do. Now, I don't know how long your university is moving to online. We originally moved online for two weeks and then it was expanded to the rest of the semester. So if it's a shorter time, one of the things you can say is, what do I need to do in the next two weeks or three weeks or four weeks to move forward so students can master the concepts? And sometimes you can front load lectures and do more lectures so you've got more time on the other end for activities and labs and assignments. Or sometimes you can adjust your assignments completely. But what I did is I prioritized and I said, all right, in this, in this course, this one course that I'm teaching, Here's the four things that students must have an understanding of, and we've covered two of the four. So I'm just gonna focus on those other two, the gold nuggets. The silver nuggets, those things I hope they get that they would get out of reading and activities, that's great. And I'm gonna let the bronze nuggets go. But everyone's going to know those gold nuggets when we get done. And that's what I'm going to focus on in my course.